Yeah. Um, so Dr. Kaku, what was it that got you interested in science? When I was a child of eight, Albert Einstein had just died. Everyone was talking about it. And they were saying that he couldn't finish something, his greatest work, the theory of everything. I wanted to complete the theory of everything. Today we have string theory, which we think is the fabled unified field theory of Einstein. And I said to myself, I wanted to devote my life to this grand search for an equation one inch long that would allow us to read the mind of God. Awesome. And what is that equation for those that don't know what it is? We think that the world consists of vibrating strings, so that our body is a symphony of strings. Physics is nothing but the laws of harmony of vibrating strings. Chemistry are the melodies you can play when these strings bump into each other. The universe is a symphony of strings. And then the mind of God would be cosmic music resonating through 10-dimensional hyperspace. Because these are not ordinary strings. <laughs> They're strings vibrating in another dimension. Awesome. And is that something that you learned in school? Or oh no, that's something we create. We created it out of nothing. I'm one of the co-founders of what is called string field theory, which allows you to summarize string theory in an equation one inch long. That's my equation. Oh, okay. Um, so what would you say to kids that are in school now and they have science classes, but they're kind of the boring stock, two-dimensional, if you will, Newtonian type science, and they're falling asleep and just not into it? You know, we're born scientists. When we're born, we want to know why the stars shine. We want to know where we came from. We want to know what does it all mean. So when we're about 10 years of age, we, we're, we're thrilled by science. And then we hit junior high school. Then we hit high school. And then it's crushed out of us. So that's why I tell young people, don't lose the faith. We're born scientists. Keep the flame alive. Get a telescope. Get a chemistry kit. Visit a planetarium. Find a mentor. Find a role model and realize there's a whole life out there discovering the universe. And then, when I was young, I read a pamphlet, So You Want to Become a Physicist. And it started off by saying, what's the relationship between baseball players and physicists? We're both paid to do what we love. And I said to myself, hey, that's for me. I can get paid to do something I love. And yeah, you can do that in science. Well, um, does the scientific community still foster that kind of imagination or do they want you to follow along the established traditions and the established way of doing things? What uh, about those kids who do have alternative ways of thinking? Well, uh, commercial science, that is science that works with the pharmaceutical industry, uh, that works with the aircraft industry, and aerospace, yeah, you got to take orders, but at least you're doing what you love. But yeah, the product has to be done by a certain time. The rocket ship, the airplane has to be marketed by a certain time. But if you're a professor, like I am, you're allowed to just roam anywhere the mind wants to roam. And that's one of the great things of being a professor. And realize that Newton, he could not get a job making widgets at a factory. Newton, Einstein, they were all professors. Awesome, awesome. Um, so, how are you liking Comic-Con? That leap from comic fact to comics fiction, as it were, and well, vice versa. Well, the critics like to say that Comic-Con is like going to Halloween early. Well, I don't see it that way. Because Comic-Con is all about the imagination. It's about inspiring young people. You know, President Barack Obama talks about the Sputnik moment. The Sputnik moment that everyone says, wow, look, outer space, I want to be part of that. Well, hey, I got bad news for you. There is no space program anymore. People are not going to have a Sputnik moment anymore. But science fiction, you can have a Sputnik moment every day. And I think that's what Comic-Con is all about, unleashing the imagination to be as crazy as you want. Because some of these people wind, well, may wind up to be the next Einstein. You were talking earlier with some of the other people about the politics of science. Can you elaborate on that? Well, a politician sees the universe as a it's a zero-sum game. You rob Peter to pay Paul. Tax policy, tax policy. That's all politicians talk about. That's not how scientists view jobs and prosperity. We are the creators of industries, not just jobs. Ask yourself a question. How many jobs did the transistor create? 
How many jobs does laser create? You're talking millions, tens of millions of people's jobs depend upon the transistor and the laser generating trillions, trillions of dollars for the world economy. That's why you have to fund science, because out of science came the transistor, the laser, the computer, television, radio, radar, microwaves, MRI machines, X-ray machines, all of that came from the laboratory of a physicist. Awesome. Um, so where is our next big great thing going to come from, a physicist? Well, the 20th century was the era of physics. The 21st century could be the era of biotechnology. Realize that just like Mary Shelley and Frankenstein, we can actually grow organs of the body. I went down to Wake Forest University, filmed what they're doing there. I saw jars. Jars containing growing human organs from living people. I saw skin, bone, cartilage, noses, ears, heart valves, blood vessels, the first bladder, windpipes being grown. And in five years' time, we may grow the first liver. That's good news for all the alcoholics out there in the audience. And we will grow the first pancreas. So Steve Jobs, in some sense, did not have to die. He died a little bit too early. And what would you say to all the aspiring physicists out there? I would say keep the faith. Yes, there's a lot of math you have to learn. Yes, math is one of the reasons why we lose so many of the young promising people. But it's worth it. If you want to, if you want to know French civilization, you have to speak French. You have to learn how to conjugate verbs in French. That's the dues you got to pay. In physics, it is mathematics. But if you master the mathematics, it's smooth sailing after that. Sweet.